What's going on, everybody? And welcome back to Hollywood Already Did It, the base podcast. If this is your first time listening or you have forgotten what we used to talk about, this is a podcast with a infrequent release schedule at the moment as theaters reopen and movies begin to come out again that will explore reboots, remakes, sequels, adaptations, discuss the roots of the property or IP that is being remade or rebooted, why it was successful at the time, why other adaptations were successful, and why we're doing it again. Is there a marketing reason? Does it do anything new for the industry, for the community, for anybody else, new audiences? Why are we re-exploring these themes? If this is your first time, welcome. If it is your first time back, welcome back. And of course, I am your host, Blake Schultz. With me is Terrence Tatum. Hello, everyone. And this week, we are exploring a long, long, long history of a franchise, one of the biggest properties in the 90s. It came out in 92. It came out in 95. There's a bad sequel we don't talk about. Countless games, endless spinoffs, trials in court. We have done so much with this property that it has all <laughs> arrived here. The second giant tentpole to release during the pandemic, kind of. The I don't even know which one on HBO Max and their direct to theater so that you can watch it safely at home. It is time for Mortal Kombat, the 2021 version. Of course, in this episode, we will be looking back at the original video game, the 1995 movie, and of course, this new iteration. I think we start with the game, yeah? We go all the way back to the beginning. You want to start yeah. at the top? Yeah. So for those who don't know somehow, which I'm sure you're there, <laughs> in 1992, four game developers, Ed Boon, John Tobias, John Vogel, and Dan Forden set out with Midway Games to create this game, a fighting game. They wanted it to have a little bit more edge, a little more brutality than things like Street Fighter and other fighting games on the market at the time, other coin-operated games that weren't really bloody, weren't really edgy. People got up. It seemed on the other side of what Mortal Kombat is. They then, you know, thought about things like Bloodsport, Enter the Dragon, and a chance came along to make a universal soldier game with Jean-Claude Van Damme. They spent a long time debating what to do with this. How do we make this game? What should we make this game? Finally, Super Street Fighter II comes out to arcades. The success of it is unignorable. It is everywhere. People are throwing in coins. They don't care. They just want to do it. They want to beat up that car. They want to beat up all the people. And that, like so many other things, gave the studio the confidence to go, I guess we can make a fighting game. The other guys did it. I guess we demand it now. We could have been ahead of this curve, but let's play catch up. They gave Ed Boon just do whatever you want. Yeah. Go for it. The license for Universal Soldier has fallen through. They now have carte blanche to make the bloodiest, goriest, biggest bash you've ever seen. Mortal Kombat finally comes out in 1992. Very different from other games on the market. They have filmed actors and instead of animated drawn sprites we have what i didn't realize for years i just thought they were very good at it the, the small shrunken down filmed people doing all their fun sports and doing moves and animations. attacks and combos yeah giving it a, a a texture unseen the game also was loaded with secrets reptile jade hidden games galaga was stuck in this thing allowing for something that continued for years to me, which was you would leave school and your friend would go, he did the fatality and he got reptile. I don't believe he got reptile. We got to get down to nickel city. Let's yeah. see if he can do it again. I can't do it. He's not going to do it. We were crowded around that thing. Like it was super bowl Sunday, seeing <laughs> if he could pull off that insane combination of up, down, left, right, left, left, down to make sure you're halfway away from him. B right. A A A B up, down to just rip out a spine. That's it. That's it. <laughs> it was insane. We was. had characters inspired by Bruce Lee and Liu Kang. We had palette swap ninjas. But more than that, then we give birth to the entertainment software rating board, the ESRB. The game is so violent and games are still so new that it catches into Congress. And we've been doing this the whole time. The game is banned in certain countries. Yeah. The reboot didn't even come out in Germany. This is... It's just been a question of the times. Does it make it violent? Leading to my favorite thing, which was the spit version of it on the Super Nintendo. Oh, yes. Nintendo wouldn't allow an R-rated game. A, they didn't want to do it. We're a family system. We're a family system. The kids are here for Mario. <laughs> Even though Street Fighter 2 is the reason there are four buttons on that 
Super Nintendo controller. And of course, the Sega Genesis version of Mortal Kombat destroyed the Super Nintendo version in sales to the point where they couldn't ignore it. And finally, on Mortal Kombat Trilogy on the Nintendo 64, you had all the blood and charm that you loved. Yeah. There was a, a code for the game, the game genie that existed in the Super NES where it put you could put the blood back in there, but it's like, Jake, guys, what, what is this? Why are we doing this with this game? You know, this was the same time that Nintendo had commercials for Yoshi's Island where a man overate and exploded in a pizza hut. So I don't know how pure they really are. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they, I think like it, Doom was out on that system. I don't know why this was the one that they were like, we're, no, we're not doing that. I just remember at that time, it was very much Nintendo it was like we're family while sega is like hey we are we're the edgy one we're the edgy the cool cousins um because in addition to mortal kombat the rating board was also created for the night trap game from the sega cd because that one was like the first time they're like okay there's some gratuitous violence and then there's some sexual aggression to women and both of those games together were kind of like all right we might need to start rating these games um and and it was all because sega was like we can do whatever the hell we want and Tinder's like guys what about the kids I mean, you know, it, it, this is a long, longer history that our podcast isn't about of also just Congress slapping labels on Getting things. in the way, yeah. We got to <laughs> put that parental advisory sticker on. We got to make the NC-17 rating, the X-rated movie. We have been doing this forever yeah. because we love telling people what to do, but giving them the open market to buy whatever they want. We can't say Mortal Kombat's for kids, but guess who's plugging those quarters in? yep terrence what was your like did you were you a fan of the game did you play it were you an arcade fiend i wasn't i spent a lot of time at the arcade it's weird though because the mortal kombat arcade game i wasn't really that big and i was heavy into street fighter uh x-men was a part of my arcade life uh and then ninja turtles was part of my my, my my arcade life those were the ones that took but i was aware that mortal kombat existed so i had a super nintendo uh, and my brother, my older brother had a Genesis and we both got a copy of Mortal Kombat. Mine was clearly the, the neuter version. Although visually the Super Nintendo was the superior version. Like it was a better, like better looking game. Um, gameplay was the same on both, but it was a, just a visually a better looking game. But the blood is sort of the, the ticket in to Mortal Kombat. And so, yeah, I got it. I was amped. Um, I, it's weird with fighting games. I, they don't have that much of a shelf life with me. Like once, uh, probably like about a good three weeks to four weeks sort of pass. I'm like, well, I've done all I can do here. Um, Mortal Kombat's a slightly different because you you do have the sort of catch catch them all type of thing going. Like, I need to learn every single fatality and be able to master it. And I, I, want, to, I want to be able to do it whenever I can. So some of those take a lot hard, longer to do, especially the where you're holding back ones and then you have to kind of flip it back the other way quickly. I was like, oh, I never can master these. The ones where it's like a directional type of stuff. I'm like, oh, these are good. Those other ones were, were hard. So I, I loved it for that purpose. And it was definitely a communal game. We were like, oh, guys, you got Mortal Kombat. Let's go over this person's house. Like, it's going to be a good time. Um, but out of the fighting games, it's probably the one that I, I did not spin. The, I, Mortal Kombat 1 and 2 I owned. And then I sort of came in and out of the series from, from that point on. Um, stuff like Tekken and like Battle Rita Toshin that were more my my way of fighting games. It's funny you say that because I was the opposite. I was all in on Mortal Kombat. I didn't play a lot of Street Fighter until I was in high school of all places and my uh, comedy troupe at our variety show in the men's changing room had a Super Nintendo and a CRTV and we would just play Street Fighter until one day when we missed our cue and the head of the student activities office came in, took the TV and it's threw done. it in the parking lot and broke it. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I was kidding. That's a real thing that happened. Suburbs of Chicago took their musicals and their plays quite <laughs> seriously. It was very important that those little boys and girls got out there and played pretend for the parents. This was, you mentioned a bonding experience. This was so much my dad and I's bonding was just having the N64 with Mortal Kombat trilogy upstairs in my room. He'd come in and play. We printed out the game facts every character's move set it must have been as thick as like a small magazine uh yeah the original game had a magazine that came with it i had like this is like a bible to this thing it's nuts and then you know the game did something i didn't really expect and i think that's what we're going to get more and more into into the why it built such a lore around it it's like i came for the blood and i stayed for the plot 
And I, I quickly fell in love with Scorpion and Sub-Zero's ideas and these stories and this lore of all these different clans and realms. And, you know, the story and the struggle was always very similar. Like the first one is there's a tournament, Liu Kang wins and Earthrealm is safe. And then we do it a second time and then Shao Kahn invades, and then Shinnok shows up and then the Deadly Alliance comes. But I always appreciated everything else around it. The Dragon Clans, the Shia Ryu, the Edenia Outworld, these giant creatures, this constant battle of like good and evil in a broad sense. And then these very, very specific reasons certain people were there. When you get into Kenshi's story and when people start having kids. And the game also it's so weird to say, but it's like it didn't really mind killing its heroes. Like when you got to Deadly Alliance and we just took Liu Kang and then at the end of that Sonia and Johnny Cage and everybody off the board and Raiden became yeah. a dark evil person and I think between that and the frankly the way fighting games have evolved into esports and these giant communities you know it it really went from being this one singular game that had enough easter eggs and secrets that you wanted to crowd around the cabinet and watch and it's evolved into I want to watch these people on Twitch really do it. And if you're me, you get sucked into this in Star Wars sized, insanely ridiculous lore and idea. But of course, that brings us, I think, unless I can talk about the game the entire time we have, but we don't have that much time and we'll come <laughs> back to it. The games are great. It had its own reboot in 2011 where we went back in time. Which we had I think is, I, this, it, it wasn't well received, but the Sub Zero game. I well, know, that's because the, the Sub Zero game is very bad. Now Shaolin is. Monks is pretty good. It was, it was pretty good. <laughs> but then Eleven had its big reboot, which I loved. We go back in time from Armageddon, and now Raiden's making all sorts of bad choices, and that's just been the game since. We didn't do a clean reboot. We kept it in continuity. It's really quite amazing. I don't, I can't think of many stories that are like, how do we undo our mess? start a clean slate, make the story different. And the answer is like, well, what if we just, did? rules don't, don't matter here. Yeah. <laughs> he sent his memories back in time and now this is a new timeline. And now it's become this weird Terminator. We got to fix the timeline It's very story. much like a, yeah, days of future past type of thing going on. <laughs> and that brings us to Mortal Kombat 1995, Enter the Dragons remake, if you will. <laughs> <laughs> Which, you know, when you watch those two movies back to back, it couldn't be more just, we've all been invited. We're all going to get on this boat and go. The It, it wears its influences like a fine cardigan uh, <laughs> of blood and martial arts. This movie produced by New Line Cinema for almost no money. <laughs> Nothing. Makes, and it's two, three years. I mean, we're now like, we talk about mania a lot and I feel like the nineties and I'm, I'm older now, so maybe I'm wrong, but I feel like the nineties, every other week, there was a new, Oh, the one one is shut down. So everybody can see the power Rangers. Oh, everyone's talking about mortal Kombat. The turtles are the biggest thing in the world. Pokemon is he, these things were Goliaths. And I feel like every year it was just like, if you're not part of this story, you're missing out on like the, the cultural movements of a decade. Yes uh it was a lot of that happening in that in that era uh and they would be for that moment uh they would be the biggest thing that ever happened to you in your life um i actively remember that was the summer of 95 so like right around my birthday i, I my birthday is on august 12th and a week later i was in chicago i just happened to be in chicago my family and cousins were like hey mortal Kombat, do you want to i was like Fuck yeah, yes absolutely let's go see that immediately and we had an entire row of that movie theater and it was packed it was like a concert in there um that techno beat hits and you just lose your it's a communal experience you just lose your shit with the entire audience it was a i mean people going to the bathroom like running back to the like i gotta get back in there now because i can't miss anything um that was an experience it's it's, it's few times that that's happened that i can remember as a, a child because i'm i'm not old enough for the star wars run um but I feel like this was one of those, I think the Batman 89 was another one of those where you just felt the the, the, the electricity of the audience. And uh, it was a fun, fun time. It, even so much so that at that point, I did not realize the quality of the movie was irrelevant. Um, and it was fine. I think it's a, it holds up pretty well. It's one of the better 
uh, gaming movies, but that was irrelevant. It was just in that experience and being around those people who are all Mortal Kombat fans, seeing the characters that you give a shit about on on screen, and then doing a pretty good job, probably one of the best jobs of giving you what the game gives you in film form. I think that was the craziest part because I was six, so I was far too young to go see it in theaters. I probably wouldn't even remember it if I did. I'm sure right. that I was, you know, up to my eyeballs in Pokemon cards by that point. <laughs> and so when I finally saw it, it was one of the first times that there was something I knew so well that seeing it on screen was a, a one-to-one. Mm-hmm. The, the splits and nut punch to Goro from Johnny Cage, the bicycle kick from Liu Kang. Sub-Zero and Scorpion, while like not even real characters, they're these like silent forces of nature in this movie, but their costumes were the costumes. It was one to one, yeah. <laughs> it was incredible to see when you were a kid. You didn't, I didn't care that they don't have any lines. Right. I still don't really care when I watch that movie. <laughs> right. Cause it is just like Johnny and, and every sequence is a level. You have the dead forest, you have mm-hmm. the bridge with the spikes that come up. You, you have the Island, it, it, the beach, you had all these tangible things that felt so real. The audience actually, when Johnny Cage's autograph shows up, the audience actually screamed friendship, which was like fucking just nuts. It it had this weird level of camp that I think the Mortal Kombat franchise kind of needs. Because this is a franchise that's brutal and crazy, but it also has babalities and animalities and pull out an arcade and play with a buddy and have (laughs) friendships and part of the silliness is in there and it, it's something that the movie really did embrace and even when it embraced it it wasn't like bad we still took the fighting the story and the characters very seriously so when he throws down the autograph picture you kind of laugh but we've had a five minute action sequence that wasn't hokey and campy right. that did show johnny cage as a good fighter so when he does the sillier like the nut punch and everything else you're like this is just it's part of it but we Burn, still get right. these great moments and it had this weird tone that I don't think movies hit anymore. Like the first Turtles movie, this movie, Batman 89, the Mario yep. Brothers movie tried to do it. A little bit, yeah. Where it's like, it's darker and grimy and weird and tangible, but it still has this like family appeal. And up mm-hmm. until the other day, if you had told me that 95 movie wasn't R-rated, I would be like, of course it's R-rated. She snaps Kano's neck on the beach and then like right. Scorpion pulls his head back. Yeah. With the tone of what that movie accomplishes, it feels like it is an R-rated film, just minus blood. But everything else feels like this. Like The Dark Knight also feels like it's a film. You're like, hey, this is not R-rated? Yeah. Some pretty big, awesome moments of the, your souls are mine. And some great like setup for what it was a, a 2% on Rotten Tomatoes sequel in Mortal Kombat Annihilation. Ooh. Yeah. And I think that kind of tone was so, is what made the movie outside of just this brand property and people wanting to see it so tangible to everybody. I, I feel like part of the appeal was it's like, it's serious, but it's silly. It's it, it, it even the Ghostbusters does it. Like it knows what part of itself to take Correct. seriously. Correct. It knows to take the science and the ghosts and the characters seriously and everything else is the comedy. Right. And this movie, I think, kind of knows what to make fun of. And you have Johnny Cage as the outsider for like for us to kind of Correct. see what all of this really is. And you give him a great arc. I think that's one of the weird parts about this game and this movie is you actually have these long character arcs and stories of redemption and vengeance and manipulation. And Scorpion goes from being a hired gun to a full character in the games to his family wasn't killed by who he thought he was, but he's now killed Sub-Zero who has a brother. And it, it's the weird, it's this like giant soap opera in video it games. Is. It's it just, what, it, I, what I loved, and I didn't really think about this until recently. What I loved is that even though Johnny Cage is our, is the audience's entryway, what was cool about this movie, especially in 95 is that they, all the marketing led with Liu Kang. So to have an Asian man as your lead character in 95 is nuts. And uh, they didn't give a damn. They're like, nope, this brand alone will bring him in. We're good. And he's great. 
Oh, yeah, like he's fantastic. everybody in the movie, there's not really one bad performance in the movie. And it, it has that practical tangibility of the 90s that now everything's CGI'd and green screen. So like, yeah. the island feels real, the sand feels real. I it, love it, the look of Goro in the 95 version. Like it's really good. I mean, we could have made him a little bit more like a turtle. Like, I think that could have aged better. Now, look, like, Reptile looks bad. There's yeah. some rough CGI. Yeah. yeah. But the, the effort is there. And when you look at how we've adapted other game stories, especially in that time, this was a, a, a masterpiece. Oh, yeah. And we didn't even really have martial arts movies like this by then. We had kind of waned out of that genre a little bit where this almost brings it back like between mm -hmm. this and then four years later the matrix we suddenly have th this martial arts genre back in full force in the west and i think it's something that we don't really talk about much and i feel like this giant thing it reached an audience and th that brings us to today or yesterday, whenever you watched the movie, <laughs> I know you didn't go see it in the dome because they're gone. Because it doesn't exist. <laughs> so now here we are in 2021. Theaters are slowly reopening. Mortal Kombat has come out. We've rebooted it after there's so much that we could do. We, we talked about Scorpion's Revenge on a past episode, the animated R-rated mm -hmm. movie. There's Annihilation. There there's are TV series. There's the TV was, series was Conquest. Yeah, Conquest was awesome. It was. It was. There was a, an unrealized web series that great proof of concepts. Mm -hmm. And I feel like there's something else that I'm missing. But yeah, who knows? So <laughs> many attempts. So many branches out there yeah. to finally land here, direct to streaming on HBO Max. What did we think? <laughs> <laughs> what did you want uh, before before i do that let me ask you what you wanted from the movie because i learned a lesson between this and godzilla versus king kong what did you want from this movie of what were you expecting or what do you what do you want this film to do um it's weird because I, I i i really still enjoy the 95 mortal Kombat. so essentially what i wanted them to do was give me the energy or what i felt in that film with blood um, I think the one thing that was missing from the 95 version was like, hey, we just don't, we're missing some of the fatalities. We, we can't get some of the cool. You wanted off. the Sega Genesis version of. Not the Super Nintendo. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm still holding out for the Genesis version. Um, but yeah, that, that's sort of what I wanted. Like, you don't really need to reinvent the wheel or change too much. I, I know this is, at its heart, it's a simplistic story, but it does get it can branch off into some very mythological things if you let it. Um, I just don't want them to try to do it all in one film or in the case of this one, not do it at all and just tell me one fifth of a story and not even get to a tournament point. So I think the the first, that 95 one had everything that I liked except for that edge. Um, and I just wished all I wanted was them just to sprinkle in that edge instead of sort of restructuring and redoing things that didn't need to actually be restructured. See, I I wanted, I said the same thing with Godzilla versus King Kong. I just want to watch the big monsters fight. I don't care about anything else. So with this, I went, yeah. I just want really good fights and I want a lot of gore. I got some really cool fights and I got a lot it of did. gore. Yeah. Then the movie ended and I felt unsatisfied. I mm -hmm. felt the same way that when you're like, I really want fast food. I'll be full after I have McDonald's. And then you're not. <laughs> and then you're uh, not, yeah. Yeah, and it, it's exactly what you said. I feel like we now make movies under the idea that we're going to get a spin-off show and a universe I and ba 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 ba. ba. Yeah. And this all goes back to the MCU, which we both obviously love. But Iron yeah. Man did not assume that they were ever going to make Falcon and the Winter Soldier. <laughs> 10 Correct. years later. You, you still tell a complete story in the one chance that you have. Now, yes, it could branch off and you you expect that, you plan for that, but you don't even <laughs> <laughs> get to the main <laughs> crux of what Mortal Kombat is in this film. Like, wait, hold on. Yeah, I mean, you it's look back at the first one in 95, and it does tell its full story, and then has its Shao Kahn showing up, and, and you're ready to right. go for the next one. So it it does do that. A lot of movies do that. And this one does, too. Right. We're going to go find Johnny Cage. Right. But I think what I've learned between both of these movies, especially when the meat is on the bone, because I really like Mortal Kombat. <laughs> And I was like, okay, you took my favorite character, Scorpion. And we even did his lineage. 
that's fine. A lot of changes. We now have this, the prophecy is no longer Liu Kang. The prophecy is actually that the bloodline of Scorpion will create the next wave of blah, 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 blah. Okay. Sure. Didn't need to do that, but sure. Um, I'll tell you the two things that really didn't work for me. Because I didn't mind. I really didn't mind Scorpion's kid. I know it seems like a lot of people online, like that's where a lot of people are focused. Yeah. But like a lot of things, I felt like if you had just turned it left a little bit. And with that specifically, I'm talking about the arcana, the concept of where their powers come from, which I don't hate because the game never bothers to explain it because it doesn't have to. Down, left, right, throw your saucer beam at them, whatever. Yeah. And a lot of it, I assume. Sub-Zero's it's what he does. He has ice powers, fire powers, people have mm-hmm. powers. Blue I King, think fireballs, all that shit, yeah. I'm not upset by this. I don't like the idea that you have to have a brand on you and then train out your ability. Mm-hmm. And then those abilities got weird. And yeah. I don't even mean Scorpion Kid's armor. I mean, I'll start with Sonya Blade. Because Sonya, that's the one. Yeah, Sonya comes in. And I I don't have a champion tattoo. I don't have this. I don't have that. And I was like, oh well, obviously what this is going to be is she's going to show up, kick ass, and then they're going to go. Well, you clearly don't need a tattoo to be a champion. That's what I thought was going to happen too. Let's go get everybody else. Like right. let's just go pick the best fighters because right. like Earth you're is part full of this of team them. without without having to have this brand. We believe in you. You're good. And then. It doesn't. <laughs> no, then she just beats Kano, gets it, and, and brand appears, and immediately can shoot her purple laser beam. Yeah. I also thought, well, this is going to be the intro to our tech, because like the special forces, Striker, Johnny Cage, Sonya, Sector, Cyrax. There's a lot in these movies that deal with like tech and the idea mm-hmm. of tech versus magic and our magic right. combining with our tech and all of these areas that, you know, give characters who you think should be able to fight Scorpion a fighting chance. And I was like, well, obviously Sonya is going to have her like laser come from like some wrist thing and she's going to go build Jax's arms. And they're going to show up and be like ready to go. And they're going to have a leg up because Shang Tsung underestimated, whatever it's going to be, that's going to, we're going to like Iron Man this a little bit. Mm Mm-hmm. And then it just turns out that, like, if you believe in yourself, you grow arms. You can get magical power. Which, which then I have to expand that, and I go, okay, fine. Jax had his, like, weird Terminator arms that, like, sucked. And, yeah, they look bad, and then they expand. And then they morph when he finds right. his arcana. Right. So is Jax's arcana healing? Because if he had just regular would he arms, had normal arms with this, what, what would or, have happened? <laughs> or his is his arcana creating metal? Right. Is it is it like what is that ability? Was he destined or does he to get, get the metal sh- arms? <laughs> or does he have the short end of the stick? And it's like your arcana is a one time use when you're in a pickle. <laughs> because I I was like that's when I like laughed audibly. I was like oh guys come on like just like. Yeah just go build him the metal arms yeah build him the metal arms i feel like this movie did its its best to write itself into corners that you that weren't necessary and i'm like well, why why there's a simpler road to get here yeah like all the all the changes it made weren't really necessary we could have just still been inviting people like raiden could have been gathering heroes Liu yeah. kang could have been gathering heroes for a coming tournament i'm not really mad that the tournament's not there although it does make the movie feel like a big part one it feels like a prequel uh, that I'm watching. And I'm okay. And I get, because I that's exactly what Shang would do. He's like, I'm just going to try to ambush these dudes beforehand. So I'm I'm good with that. It's just when it's over, you're kind of just like, oh, now I just have blue balls. Because I was like, wait, what? I, I feel like we, the story is yeah. after this. And then there, there wasn't a lot of world building either. Because we don't get to see a lot of Outworld. We spend most of the time in this dungeon. And then the big, like, climactic fight is the... Raiden can teleport people anywhere. Let's just get teleported to where the villains are or have them teleported us and fight them again. Right. And I was like, well, that's not really like, your arc is less meaningful than it was in the game and in the first one. It is more just like, turns out I can send people wherever I want. Where do we want to go to? Where do we want to (laughs) go? And then, you know, you get kind of this weird blend of who these characters are. And before I do that, I want to finish my Scorpion thing because I was like, well, his arcana should just be becoming scorpion that can be scorpion's connection because now i'm like well is my 
I hate to be that guy, but is my favorite character now just, is he done? Is he going to show up in these movies when it's convenient? Right. It's a super, it's a weird plot hole that you're like, okay, now this isn't. And, this you know, we, makes sense. we make it about this revenge story with Sub-Zero and him, but they both say like for the Lin Kuei and for the Shia Ryu. And I, I don't think anybody really knows what these are except for you guys and people like me who have played the games. I was going to say this, this movie does a little bit, a lot of what, Zack Snyder's DC did for a while there is like I'm just going to assume that everybody who's watching this film knows everything that they can about the Mortal Kombat property and if you don't F you because that's what we're doing and there was like all of those kind of things together made me look at this as an adaptation and be like well take the liberties but get the characters right and we're now Mortal Kombat's been so long that like there's my version of Raiden in the 90s who's just like the Nick Fury and I'm going to get everybody and I'm going to do what's right. And there's the 2011 Mortal Kombat or 2009 Mortal Kombat 11 jaded. And not even then that happened in like Deadly Alliance after right. he like becomes Dark Raiden. Jaded, pissed, angry. I'm so tired. All y'all had to do was win one out of 10 one. tournaments. We've <laughs> lost nine. I've been doing this for hundreds of years. I don't even know where the champions are anymore. I don't care. Just please, please somebody win. Yeah. I'm exhausted. And I didn't hate that, but it, it gave this weird cynicism to the whole team. And I never felt like they came together. They all still just felt like individuals. Sing after. Singular people that are just hanging around each other. Yeah. Even um, Jackson, Sonia, who are supposed to be super close, don't feel like that. They're that tight knit of a duo no the closest you really get is like luke hang and kung lao which right. that stuff is great it is like the the kung stuff lao that great <laughs> yeah the stuff that works very well in the movie is luke hang and kung lao and shang Tsung and his his literal cabal of villains yeah um obviously kano is great the comic relief i wish his arcana didn't sprout out of racism yeah i was like it's a bit troubling <laughs> i also again was like just have somebody rip his eye out and give him yeah, the laser they, eye. It was so weird. Like they cut around his thighs. Oh, is this how you're going to lose it? It's kind of with the, the uh, Charlie's Angels of it. I was like, how does he lose his arm? Like that's sort of what this reminded me of. I was like, guys, just take his eye out, please. Just, just, I just, just have just Reptile do it. do it. Yeah. You can get all the tech can come back to Sonia. She can give it to him by accident. She can build the arms. I am. Let's give her something to do. <laughs> I am a, of the, of the mind. I'm not so much against the use of lineage to, to Cole. I just wish it wasn't Cole. Like, I think you could have repurposed that to anybody. Cole did not work for me at all. Um, because I don't think I, if you're going to, if you're going to do a character that is essentially a 1A to John, like basically Johnny Cage, then just put, just, just put Johnny just in put there. Just put Johnny like, in, from yeah. From the start, like, why are we, why are we playing this game? Um, and you give us a very, there's nothing rem more remarkable about him aesthetically. Like, there's no, he's not a great fighter. He's not, there's nothing that looks so cool. They're like, oh, we got to put this character in there. And there's enough characters in the Mortal Kombat lore. They're like, all right, we can just put somebody in here and not waste time. With yeah. And that was like, then they put a lot of people on the board that I liked. And that was the other weird part. I was like, man, I want to watch all, I want to watch Reptile get his heart ripped out, but I also want more Reptile. I'm like, I'd like to see more of him. Like, <laughs> right. It's, I, I became so conflicted. We like, we made the big fire dragon at eight Cabal. Cause look, the stuff in this movie Cabal that works, works yeah. so well. The it special does. effects are awesome. The CGI is great. These fights are some of the best fucking fights I've seen in years. These fatalities, I think we ripped Natara in half with yes. his hat. With, his, with hat. his Captain America hat. It was and amazing. Like wipes the blood off the brim. I'm like, yeah, that's that. Very cool. Wow. <laughs> like the stuff we got right, we got so right. And that's what makes the other stuff kind of a bummer. Because yeah. I, I look at it and I'm like, man, these deaths were awesome. And I, I had a big bombastic fun time through the whole thing. The ice settings with Sub-Zero were great. When that whole studio is on ice and he brings it all up and he throws it down. You, you Oh my God, I've never seen anything like this on my small screen. This is amazing. <laughs> then you kind of get underneath that a little bit and you're like, okay, but like, what else? You know, we right. wouldn't have gotten to Deadly Alliance if we didn't eventually go like, we got to put some meat on these characters' bones. We can't just yeah. keep palette swapping Ermac and Noob Saibot and da 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 to the end of time. Unless you're me and I want to buy all of those toys. I want every single version of them. <laughs> Obviously. So, I so I'm like, well, did we add Cole? So then we get into the 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 why of the movie, I guess. 
did did we feel are we exploring anything new or is this just like it's time for the r-rated super violent mortal Kombat movie that fans have been dying for and if that's the case why are we adding these characters that aren't really speaking to a new audience in a, in a way we're not really diving into any like heavy themes we're not you're really not, yeah so you're not putting any new themes or any new challenges on the board because if, if if cole came in it was like bringing in a whole nother like concept to this world and i'm like all right cool there's a reason why we're here but if you're just putting him out here just because like oh i needed somebody else to have a way in so i can kind of do this one story there then that's sort of a waste i think if you're if you're going to go back to this world and your whole purpose is like hey I want to do something different then do it but i th it feels like these folks were just like hey i just want to make a cool ass violent mortal Kombat." and if that's what you're doing then give us a cool ass violent mortal mortal Kombat. like let's give us our characters that we give a damn about and not let's not play this fast and loose with whatever the hell else we're doing and i mean look that's there like if that's if you're here to watch Cabal get eaten in half by a dragon, you're getting it. You're going to get it. If you're here <laughs> to watch these other characters have their heart tripped out and shot through the stomach, and boy, is it awesome. It is. Like, that is some of the most fun. There is just a part of me that's like, ah, but like, we've now taken, and we know, I mean, if we know the story, Sub Zero's not gone. This actor has signed on for four movies for if it's successful. Yeah. And if you're like, but how? Well, one, Shang Tsung has everybody's souls. It doesn't really yeah. matter. <laughs> but we also know that we're going to get our cool, unmasked Sub Zero with a scar on his eye who gets to be like, I'm the original. And if yeah. you're a big, dumb nerd like me, it means Noob Saibot might be coming. And when he popped off his blue stuff and was just in black, I immediately was like, Noob Saibot's coming. We're doing it. <laughs> we're doing it. It's going to be great. I want the robots. I want smoke. I want Sector. I want Cyrax. Like the. For all of my gripes with the movie, I there's, there's so much that I liked that I was like, I'll I'll keep doing this. I just want us to get a little bit deeper, and if we're gonna keep doing it, I, we have to go why. And the answer yeah. to why could even be like, it's more inclusive. This is an infinitely more inclusive, diverse Mortal Kombat than we've ever gotten. Maybe it not is. ever, but I think so. Well, um, and, we, and we don't we don't uh, whitewash some characters that don't right. need to be whitewashed. Right? Yeah. yeah. We're we're doing that work and that's important work so if we want to argue we're not exploring anything new story-wise but we're making more jobs and opportunities for marginalized communities who might right. not get the opportunity otherwise and that's just as important as anything else and i will happily go well that's why we're doing this yeah that could be it in itself i also will i'm i'm going to shoot a little like i sound down and i i am i'm not i'm not completely as in love with this as i was the previous but i'm going to shoot a little bail in the fact that I think this is also a film that does better when you're watching it with an audience um, because it becomes a community sort of experience. You're all kind of, you as a Mortal Kombat audience are getting excited about the same things at the same time. Without that, some of the things that are like, yeah, this is cheesy or this is this, like, it's a little less, it's a little more forgiving when you have other people just as rowdy next to you watching it. Yeah. Yeah, well, I think that that's something that we don't have right now. Right. And I think that's also why it was fun. I was there with my roommates. We were having our whiskeys. Our, we made margaritas and popcorn. It was an event in this apartment. We really, nice. like, we did it. It was great. It was the most <laughs> fun I've had watching a movie the entire pandemic. Nice. And was very much like, oh. And then when it was over, we were like, wait a minute. Hold, like, hold on. Because I, it, um, so then you get into, I guess, the challenge of adapting this property. Because you do have now fans like us who are like we can't we want to see the tournament we want to see yeah. a raiden that's not super cynical and jaded we kind of want Liu kang to be the chosen one i want my scorpion to be a specter out for revenge who realized he's been duped by quan chi and has to go on a journey of redemption for years and years and years and years right and then there's the new timeline where we are doing all these other things. We have cynical Raidens. We have a dead Liu Kang. The prophecy isn't really accurate. We have this, this new cast of characters that I am less familiar with, even though I have played the new ones. I just finished 11. But the Terminator is not going to be in this movie. No. <laughs> um, so I'm like, it, it's hard when there's so much in lore and so and the fans all want something different. Because mm -hmm. there are the fans who are like, just rip his spine out. And then there's me who's like, I want to know about the Lin Kuei, but you also should rip his spine his out. His spine should still be missing. <laughs> like it, it, 
And I feel like it is a little bit like the Marvel boat where I'm like, take the liberties, change your stories, figure out why these characters work. And do we really need to add anybody? What story are we really telling with Cole that we would have been unable to tell with anybody else? And if the answer is eh, not much, then just take him off the board. Then just keep, yeah. Yeah, Just have Scorpion there, have Sub-Zero there, get... The, the, this property worked, you know, we go back to the arcade game and it's like a game to a movie is always going to be a challenge because, you know, something like Geometry Wars or Tetris is never going to be a great movie because there's nothing to that other than super right. heavy fun time. Uh, but if you want to make a Geometry Wars movie, I will go watch it because uh, that game was dope. <laughs> but this is one that I feel like has more meat on the bones than people fully realize and yes it's popular because it's bloody and gory and it makes us go oh man and there's always i think going to be something in our society for better or for worse that likes visceral carnage like that it's the reason we watch horror movies there's a reason why we watch horror movies why when uh car chase sequences or cars are being chased on the highway you're like well i'm i'm done i'm locked in for this for the why do we all watch serial killer documentaries like we're we're doing this you know it's Um, there it might be a little dangerous sometimes but and you but there is a kick to that and you sort of want to watch that it's funny when this was over my first thought was like ah i like a great deal of this there's a lot that i don't like i think this would be better if this was a series um if this was like uh like you do an eight episode arc of this because that felt like a pilot episode and i'm like oh cool and then the next episode you start the first round of the tournament that makes sense um as opposed to let's we won't get another one of these probably for another two years if i mean does if right Right. like there is now for anything that i think comes out in these times of covid nine million at the box office behind some movie i've never heard of in an international (laughs) market (laughs) Right. Uh, which you just never know when that's going to happen now. I don't yeah. think that's a problem either. That's just part of it. That's the competitive yeah. marketplace we live in. Um, so you got to scale that. It didn't quite do Godzilla Kong numbers, but it's R-rated. Right. It, it, it's very hard to compare anything right now. And the, frankly, we've lost Pacific theaters. Uh, if a wide release movie gets about 4,800 theaters, you have to assume that we're now down to what, 4,300 yeah 4400 i don't know how many pacific theaters there are i'm extrapolating but even even if it's a hundred that's that's a decent percentage of your income that any movie can make right so you know the thing had a like a 96 million dollar production budget you do another 100 million for pna i don't know how we measure things on hbo max i don't yeah i'm not sure how that works for them um it seems like they had quantified whatever Godzilla and Kong had done as a success. I don't know if that's quite the same. Like, I mean, I'm sure eventually they'll come out and like, yeah, this didn't quite, you'll get something that does a one-to-one. So yeah, this didn't do quite as well as Godzilla versus Kong. Um, but I also a, think it's, this is a very, a much, they both are, but I feel like this is a smaller niche audience than Godzilla versus Kong. Yeah, well, it's, well, the video game audience is getting bigger and bigger by the day, but it's yeah. still R-rated. Uh, right. It's still kind of a like a franchise that I think people have hesitancy for because uh, I think there are a lot of big fans who are like, look, if we're not doing it the way I want them to do it, I'm not even going to waste my time. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's tough to bring these things to the screen, I think. I think adapting any video game is hard. Said, yeah, these gaming movies are, they, they, they always have a, um, a, harder, a harder road than most of the other movies because typically when you play these games like tomb raider or uncharted like which we'll see down the road but when you do these gaming gaming movies a part of the reason why people even want them is because when they're playing them they feel everything you're in it you're you're in control of it when you take the control out and you're just watching basically cut scenes of it then it starts becoming like okay then you have to do something else beyond that because i'm no longer immersed in it as a as a player i'm now just watching it and if the story isn't slightly different or it does something to elevate from what i've seen on the screen and i'm like well then why why are we here yeah and you're getting to you're getting to the same place comic books are at where there's just so much to pull from who are you going to make happy and which version of it is your mm-hmm. version i i sort of said what i've said about the spider-man movies where i said uh between sam raimi and tom holland's is my perfect spider-man movie somewhere in those between those two and I think you're right. If we could Sega Genesis up that first Mortal Kombat movie, 
give it the big R, give it some of the violence that's in this or infuse some of that story and world building because there's so much visual world building in that when you look at the giant mountain this temple for Shang Tsung you you get so much out of it and yes there were things like in Raiden's rundown castle you had Katana's blade you had Goro's statue Shao Kahn's statue but that played so much more as like an easter egg for me to do the the Leo DiCaprio pointing meme yeah (laughs) And I feel like the first one did it in a way that made me understand the world more. Uh, and it's, but you know, I don't think extreme violence is enough to just build a franchise off of. I think we'd get tired by the third or fourth one. I agree. Like you'll get burnt out of that. Uh, now, granted, you get to make four of these movies. I, that'd be amazing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there's nothing to be mad about that. I just think it's very presumptuous to be like, I've signed these people on for three and I've made the story for three. I'm like, guys, you need to get through one. And if the audience doesn't show up for one, you're not going to get to come back to do this. Again. Well, I get the struggle there. You don't want to make a contract for one movie, have it blow up, and then your guy be and like, you never to, mind. Like, yeah, and then you have to overpay to get everybody Body back <laughs> so well you know you, you pay we can pay these people correctly that was a big avengers problem yeah. but, you know correctly is a scale because actors are still <laughs> making more than i'll ever see right to look like thor i mean <laughs> uh so i don't know i think there's enough on the bones for me to go see another one i feel like i was ready to hit play next and i know i was because i put on the 95 one right after yeah like i would have um, I, I don't know because this acted more like a prequel i don't know if i would ever really outside of probably that Sub-Zero, Scorpion, Fatal. I don't know if I, in that Shang, Shang and Tiger battle, I don't know if I would ever really watch this film as an entirety over again. I just want to get to the point of where the tournament starts. I just, That's I what liked, I want to get into. The characters I liked, I liked enough. The fighting yeah. was good enough. The deaths were incredible. The like the production design was great. It was. Uh, the, the actors were all pretty good. So if we can just crank up some of that world building, find... Like a thema- and everything doesn't need to be like uh, ripped from the headlines, but I'm like, <clears throat> find something in there. Like a theme can be as simple as like friendship in the Guardians right. of the Galaxy movies. And right now I feel like this kind of lacked a theme. Even if it's family, like something needs to connect that. We need that team to sort of feel like a team. Um, and because I think I might have been okay with that if this movie ended with them feeling more like a unit, and then like, all right, cool, these are guys are about to get whatever the hell's coming to the next. Uh, I might have walked away a little bit happier. I'm like, oh, cool, now I just see a bunch of ragtag folks that have nothing really to do with each other. And my last thing on the story that I didn't care for was we spent the entire time going, the dragon tattoo means everything, all for Raiden at the end to be like, I'll make a new list of champions and yeah. you'll find them. And I was you'll, like, well, well, hold on, what? you'll find <laughs> them. It's like, so there's more of them. <laughs> you made it seem like this was it <laughs> yeah it's it's those things but i mean bring me johnny cage bring me the robots bring me jade bring me katana i said katana i need to see on yeah i need to see katana in this world. i really want to see some of like the new characters too that are like we'll probably never get to like jackie briggs and cassandra cage and these, S-A-K, these yeah, new cage generation dog, yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's way down the road, but I'd right. love to see them. I'd love to get to Armageddon and get some goofy thing where Raiden's fighting Shao Kahn and sends his memories back. And we got to redo this first movie with different choices. I'm it. Let's get weird. Yeah. But I'm a weird, like, I'm like, give me Shinnok. Give me the reveal that Sub Zero didn't kill his family. Bring in the next Sub Zero. Make Scorpion. But, but we don't really have Scorpion on the board. So I'm like, if you do that now. Yeah. Does Cole, who is not connected to this story of vengeance, I don't know. Yeah. But let's keep going because Mortal Kombat is awesome. I would like to spin. An, let me get another round of this to see where we are headed, and then I can kind of feel see how I feel about all of this. And uh, let's cross it over with the DC universe. We did it in the game. <laughs> That's very true. Maybe not live action, but just yeah. give me an R-rated animated movie. I don't think that's too much to ask you put for. Put in the line of Scorpion's Revenge, I'm sold. This would be great. <laughs> yeah. I would love that. It, that's what I want next. Give me that while you guys work on Mortal Kombat 2. Right. And, uh, you know, keep them coming. I think we're really, really close to cracking the video game movie. I think we are. I think Detective uh, Pikachu was good. Sonic was good. This was good. I think for all of our complaints, we still walked away being like, it's not bad. It's, it's- not bad. Um, I like both of the ones, like Detective and Sonic 
much better. I think they're and they're, the rewatch factor for those for me are are higher. But yeah, I think we're we're getting to a point where we're at least hitting solid singles, and it's like okay, this isn't you're not butchering the video game movies anymore. Um, let's keep this pace going. Um, we would have Uncharted, I guess, is the next. Uncharted movie. would be next. Yeah, yeah, I don't. Um, I still. You know, we know did this we, episode, and I'm like, coming next week. Ah. We'll see. <laughs> Falcon the Winter Soldier will also be over. You might just not have to hear from us for a while. <laughs> I don't know. Warner Brothers yeah. Animation was keeping us going for, they you were. know, like big, like good on you, Warner Brothers. You gave us like five great animated movies at the top we of the pandemic, it. and then yeah. you put everything on HBO Max. <laughs> <laughs> way to be well, Warner Brothers is be. the only one who's made this this entire like year and a half like all right cool we're gonna keep you well, going we're, disney we're, also gave us wandavision and falcon of the winter that's Soldier. true that's true they, at least warner brothers has been doing it from basically the start and netflix uh, has given us coco melon it's always in the top 10 someone's <laughs> watching <laughs> yeah uh i think that's the show guys Thank you so much for listening. Welcome back. Hopefully we will have more for you in the coming weeks. Of course, you can subscribe to the podcast or the YouTube channel, wherever you're doing your consuming from. Let us know what you thought of Mortal Kombat, the reboot, the remake, the sequel. Put it in there. What characters you want to see next? Who do you want to see coming? How did you feel about this one? How did you feel about the Arcanas and the dragon tattoos and the girl without the dragon tattoo? <laughs> um, and then, of course, leave us a review. And then follow us on Hollywood Already Did It on Twitter and Instagram. I'm at, as always, Blake Terrence at Terrence Tatum. We also have You Can't Do That Anymore, a movie podcast looking back at old movies and whether or not they are still feasible today, if they're as good as we thought they were or if they're very problematic. I, of course, do How Do You Figure about action figure collecting. And uh, that is it. We will see you all next time. Later. Whenever that is.